This podcast is sponsored by Murgatroyd, intellectual property attorneys. For more information on today's guest and our company, visit murgatroyd.com forward slash podcasts. Hello and welcome to the fifth season of Murgatroyd's Innovation Talks podcasts. We're delighted you have joined us. If you have any questions, you can email us at innovation.talks at murgatroyd.com or contact us via Twitter at Murgatroyd. And please remember to subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. So let's go straight into today's podcast. Hello there. My name's Catherine. Director Patents at Murgatroyd Southampton office and office lead there. I'm delighted today to be joined by Ben. Hi, Ben. Hi, Catherine. It's great to be here and I'm really happy to do a podcast with you. Really, really good to be with you too, Ben. Uh, ben is Director Patents in our Munich office and today the topic we are discussing will be computer implemented inventions. It's a really interesting topic. It's something that I come across a lot in my day to day work and I'm pleased to be talking to you about it, Ben. Yeah, actually, you're absolutely right. This is one of the key words people keep on asking, and it's always a big question how we deal with this at the EPO because there are a lot of regulations and regulations. So it will be great to discuss this in detail with you. Yeah, absolutely. If I had one pound or one euro for every time somebody asked me, or oh, can we protect with a patent software? Can I obtain a patent for computer implemented invention? I would be, I think, rolling in money. So uh, it's a question you get asked a lot as well, Ben, no doubt. Shall we talk about some of the basics, first of all? Yeah, absolutely. Makes sense. So the definition, perhaps, of computer implemented invention, how is this thought about at the European Patent Office and for me as well at the UK Intellectual Property Office? What are these type of inventions? Actually, computer implemented invention is everything which involves a computer to, to carry out a method. For those of you who are not familiar with a patent language, it sounds a bit artificial that we always have a computer implemented invention for carrying out a method, the method comprising steps A, B, C. And the reason for this is under European patent law, and this is very similar uh, all around Europe and the national patent laws, software as such is excluded from patent protection. The legislator decided that software, let's call the source code, should be protected as copyright. Well, everybody knows copyright is like if you have an identical reproduction of a book, for example, this would fall under copyright protection. Yes, absolutely. More for artistic work there, definitely. And copyright is for code. Mm. Absolutely. And if you have a computer program, software code, and you have it written in C++ and you do the, absolutely the same method and write it down in Java, it won't fall under the scope of the copyright protection. Um, so in order to deal with this limitation that uh, software is not patentable, what we're trying to do is we describe the things the software is doing in the language of a method. And this results in a method claim, which is a computer implemented invention. Mm, so absolutely. it's simply we're describing a method which is carried out by a processor on a computer. And this is a protection means for software. Absolutely, absolutely. As you say, under European patent statute, software and computer programs are excluded subject matter. And so the way we are able to protect computer implemented inventions is, as you say, the method um, rather than the, the code and the, the written out code in itself. So have you got a recent example um, or further details that you can provide, Ben, there, of such a type of method? It's a very good question indeed. I've got so many, so many of these kind of applications on my desk, so it's very difficult to find a dedicated example. But if you have a method which is doing something, you have a vending machine which is um, programmed to sell, for example, cold drinks, and when the temperature goes up, the temperature rises, or the price might, might get higher. This would be a plain business method, which again is not patentable under European patent law, but you could implement this method in sense of a software. So the software is actually calculating something. This again is not patentable. But if we then have it in a different language that we have a method which 
measures the temperature and adjusts something based on the measured data and puts a value out, which is then used for anything further. This is a typical computer implemented invention. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think the tests we look for, for patentability, are having that real world technical effect, that real world measurement of the data. You would agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's right. And also, I think in the very beginning of software patterns, I'm sure you agree on this, it was enough to have a processor which is performing the method. This mm. was simply enough to render the claimed subject matter technical. And this is something we haven't mentioned this before in our podcast, the technical effect and the technical solution. This is crucial for patenting. Under patent law, patents shall be granted for technical solutions of technical problems. And if we don't have these technical effects, we don't get a patent. And as I said, initially, uh, the basic requirement was to include a processor, a computer, and this was enough. Yes, yes. And that got you your technical effect. That meant that you were no longer merely talking about some software code, but you had that real world technical effect. Now we have moved on from that. You are right. And I always say when I'm discussing this, what I need to see in the computer implemented method is more than just the operation of the code on the computer. There has to be some additional effect. And that is one way I, I try to get across to inventors how we might try and protect their computer implemented invention if it does something in addition to, as you say, initially just operating on a processor. Yeah, that's completely, completely right. And um, we are also notice this kind of progression of the EPO case law that nowadays um, the examiner's stone states um, this is something which is excluded from patentability or in many occasions they don't. They simply say, well, this is obvious in view of a computer, mm. which mm. says yes. we have something which is um, the administrative or the method and the technical thing is a known computer and the implementation on the method on this technical apparatus is considered obvious and therefore lacks an inventive step. And this is a progression which makes it extremely difficult for us to, to argue against. Do you agree? Absolutely. So as well as we have discussed already the exclusion from patentability of the structure and the wording of the computer program itself, the code, other excluded areas of subject matter include methods of doing business, rules for playing a game, and often the mathematical formula and method that would come into some aspects of computer programming. So absolutely correct. Instead of the objections being sometimes about the area of exclusion or oh, this is not protectable because this is a method of playing a game or a method of doing business or a computer program, the objections we see are that we are proposing in the patent application an obvious movement forward in innovation because the operation is already known, but in a different functionality or in an administrative function. And there, again, I would always try to pull the inventor's attention back to what is the technical effect that the invention provides. And as you have said, Ben, the technical solution to the technical problem. So identifying the technical problem and setting out how the solution has been arrived at. Sometimes we don't get there, but sometimes we do. We, we do get, get patents through to grant this way. Absolutely. And maybe another point we should mention in this respect is the EPO at the moment goes even further and we can only refer to technical effects which are mentioned in the description. This is also something which has changed in the recent, I think, would say one or two years. Initially, it was always possible to discuss and more or less obvious technical effect achieved by the solution. But now we receive office actions where the examiner says, well, it might be that you got this effect, but it isn't mentioned in the description. So you, you cannot refer on this. Mm -hmm. And this is really something which is crucial for, for the inventors and also for the people who are doing the, the drafting of the patent is to include these technical effects. In many occasions, 
it's only actually the inventor who knows best about the effects, why he's doing something, what is the technical effect. And in prosecution of patent applications, we need these kind of informations in order to convince the examiner and to show him, listen, here is a technical effect and this is something which is new and this is achieved by the implementation of the method on the computer system. Thank you for that, Ben. That's very interesting that the whole idea and concept of computer implemented inventions came out of the exclusion to patentability set down in patent law for computer programs. And it's another point to make here, I think, that the drafting of this type of patent application really is a close collaboration with ourselves as patent attorneys and the inventors and the applicants for this type of patent application where we need to understand and really have excellent detail from the inventors about the blood, sweat and tears that they've gone through to try and arrive at this solution and for them to set it in context of what they have achieved and how they have come about it and where the technical aspects are rather than focusing on perhaps the more business or commercial side of things where the improvement, the effect of the improvement might be in less processing time or a faster result. But we need to see that backtracked a little bit. That's how how I like to look at it. Again, though, you are completely correct that we are thinking even at the outset when we are drafting these patent applications about how we are going to prosecute the applications and get them through the examiners, either at the UK Intellectual Property Office, the UK IPO, or the European Patent Office, the EPO. So now we have to try and prepare and prosecute patent applications to this almost fiction of computer implemented inventions. I can see that as being difficult initially for inventors and applicants to understand. Have you come across that? Yeah, absolutely. Especially with less experienced inventors, which are not so familiar to the procedures or the requirements in this field. It is difficult because what we are doing when we are drafting patent applications, we are translating the software or the idea of the inventor, which in many cases is a software, into this abstract figure, which is called computer implemented invention. I recently been talking to an individual inventor. He had a great idea about cryptography. And it was obviously software who's creating different kinds of keys to encode software to get a really secure encryption. And when I sent over the first set of claims, which was drafted as a computer implemented invention, because this is the basic requirements to have at least a chance to get it through. He was kind of disappointed and he told me, well, but what is this? This is not my invention. We're talking about software. I told him, well, you're, you're right, but we have to kind of encrypt the invention using this concept of the computer implemented inventions to render the unpatentable invention into a form which is patentable, at least in theory, at the EPO. And this kind of invention, it is very difficult if you have typical mechanical inventions or something. You have something in your hands and you're just describing it. You have a couple of wheels, a couple of screws, and they're moving something. This, this is somehow easy, but we are talking about something virtual. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because it's virtual, then it's more difficult to explain to inventors, I find, how we are going to set out the innovation in the form of the claims and how we are going to get their innovation set out in a patent application that, as you say, stands some chance of success before examiners who are applying patent law and particularly applying the exclusion to patentability of the wording computer programs as such. And so we are putting the invention in the form of computer implemented invention method claims. And yes, I have had I've had pushback from inventors exactly as you have had on this point. You are right that a mechanical invention, moving parts, couple of wheels, a lever, it's absolutely a lot easier to see where the innovation lies, isn't it? Absolutely. And um, also, if we don't go to mechanics, but stay more in the field of electronics and computer, if you have a circuit and you have electrons passing around and they're triggering a switch, this is technical, this is easy enough. If you have a data package traveling around the network and the data package is triggering a virtual switch on a server. This makes it far more difficult, both for in the sense of getting it patented and also for understanding what, what is really happening. And this is yes. the great challenge on the, uh, in this area. 
Yes, and absolutely right. Uh, a challenge, not an impossibility. I do like to stress that. Have you had any examples recently, Ben, where you we have had success or these cases have come across your desk in the field of computer implemented inventions? Yeah, absolutely. It's, um, for example, the, the case I just mentioned with the cryptography. We finally uh, managed to, to convince the examiner we are handling the data in a different way. And the examiner was arguing, well, this is, doesn't make sense because the entire prior art states that nobody would do it. It doesn't make sense. And we say, well, we do it and it makes sense. We have a effect and it's surprising because nobody was doing it before. And yeah, it's excellent. a contradiction to, to the entire text, textbook knowledge. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is really the, the great moments where you have something which is useful. And yeah, I, I, I call it, it's our own version of the Eureka moment, Ben. Also, I think with people increasingly working from home or being in a more home-based environment or version of lockdown, we are using and seeing examples of computer-implemented inventions all over, from the online ordering of our groceries through to perhaps exercising and using apps or fitness trackers or stationary cycling and the applications for having a virtual scene cycling alongside you or running alongside you. Also, all of our online video conferencing, there's lots and lots of patent applications in that field as well. It is very timely that we are talking about computer implemented inventions. I have a couple in the field of cryptography and uh, one in the field of, of blockchain, so, so fintech as well, where the examiner was able to see that the innovation was the processing and the efficiency that had been achieved with the computer implemented invention. Another one as well with a particular search function and databases, often there is some scope for providing the examiner with evidence of the improvement that has been provided and the technical aspects that have been provided in the updating of databases and material like that. I know of other examples in the medical field as well that I have come across where, for example, a, a more efficient way of providing an X-ray image or a more efficient way of focusing on a particular aspect of a patient for imaging. That is another example, even an example that the European Patent Office cites as a valid example of technical effect and technical solution to a technical problem that is implemented in a computer. As you mentioned cryptography, actually I've got, I'm currently working on a couple of cases and the technical effect is an increase in security. It might be of data communication and also financial transaction, things like this. And some of them already went through and others we are still in discussion with the examiner arguing that actually an increase of security is always a technical effect. And this is not an administrative thing. It's, this is definitely a bit on the edge, what is accepted by the examiners. And I think um, maybe this again goes to the client. There are some cases which really might be necessary to go into appeal to try to evolve some case law and to try to change the behavior of the EPO. Actually, to be honest, I had, it's already a couple of years old, but it's in, it's in case, it's still pending. We had examination or proceedings and it was a software case. And we were discussing that even though the basic idea of this patent application of this invention might be driven by commercial aspects, but the way how we go there is a technical solution. And it, we are of the opinion that even though the triggering moment might not be technical, the solution indeed can be technical. And we had oral proceedings and the examiners were quite nice. And they said, we have to decide as we do, we have to refuse the application because we are bound to the current case law. But we really ask you to go into appeal because we need guidance and well, I was asking whether we get a kind of discount for the appeal proceedings, but we didn't get so far. No, but, uh, <laughs> no. I, I think the, it, it is a sign that in this area, there is a lot of evolving case law and evolving subject matter as innovation is, is flying ahead in this area. It is a good point you have made there, though, about the encryption and the increase in the security aspect. One block, if you like, that I have come up against with examiners and with existing case law is that if you are automating or improving predominantly an administrative process, 
even if the improvement is great and the financial or the commercial gain is incredible, that administrative process and dealing there with the administrative function really is, is not seen as technical. And however many hours or years or months were spent on the invention, we're not going to get that through the European Patent Office. My best example of this, I think, is a wonderful um, application now long dead for and I think we'll take this as our last example, Ben. I think I think it's be a good one to end on. Of a wonderful system for a group buying of wedding gifts. So instead of selecting a wedding gift for the bride and groom yourself, the idea was that you would pool contributions together for the bride and groom. And this system provided a way of keeping track of the contributions for a larger item, noting who had contributed, how much they'd contributed, and informing by an automated method the bride and groom to be when the amount necessary for the larger item had been reached and your guests had purchased and clubbed together for the TV or the sofa or another aspect of an item on that list of wedding gifts. Obviously, that may have been a great aspect to roll out for a large merchant, a large general department store. That would be a wonderful feature to have on their online shopping website. But actually, really, the whole of all of the functionality there could have been provided by one person on the end of a phone or a series of text messages. So nothing really there technical, no technical improvement and no technical solution to a technical problem. So that didn't go through to Grant, but is a good illustration of the contrast there, I think, between not a technical effect and your example, Ben, of the encryption and the increased security providing that technical effect. So I think that concludes the examples we've been able to give Ben. And really, it's been a great discussion. Always a pleasure to speak to you. And thank you for your time today, Ben. Thank you, Catherine. The pleasure was on my side, actually. I'd like to also remind everyone listening that if they feel they have an aspect that they would like to protect with their work, a computer implemented invention, an aspect of a software they may wish to talk to us about, then do get in touch with us. Do get in touch with our IP attorney. Always really happy to have a chat. I think you'd echo that as well, Ben. I completely agree again with you. If you have any idea which you might think might be patentable, but you don't know how, just speak to us. It's our job, it's our experience to, to figure out how we can get the best protection for, for any inventions. And there are really very, very few cases where you don't get anything. And we are happy to help you and we're here to help you just get in touch with us. Thank you very much. Completely agree. Thank you, Ben. Thanks for your time today. We hope you found today's podcast valuable. And remember to subscribe so you don't miss any of our future episodes. So until the next time, goodbye. Our business is founded on trust and collaboration. The subjects we choose for our podcasts are topical and informative. We are always looking for suggestions for new topics for discussion. So if there's an area of IP that you're keen to understand better, please drop us a line at innovation.talks at murgatroyd.com.